Okay, hang on, gang. I am trying to change this so that comments are enabled. And uh, let's see if I can do that and get you to be able to comment on this. Evidently, when I set it up, I had it disabled. And uh, I'm not sure it's going to allow me now to... It's, I'm not sure it's going to allow us to go ahead and do comments. Let me see if I can get that to uh, ch to change. Okay, so we got comments now. Comments are allowed. Thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, go ahead, if you would, if you are on the chat, I see we've got uh, a number of people watching now. Go ahead and, if you would, just type in the chat your name that you are here. I had originally set it up without comments. I apologize for that. So uh, if you would go ahead and just, just indicate that you are there and with us and um, make sure the comments are working because I want you to be able to go ahead and um, ask questions during this chat. So uh, Jordan Novak, okay, great. Hi, Jordan. Big hello from DC. Good to see you. Okay, and I'm taking that meeting, Washington, D.C. Okay, that's right, we are. Anna Pittman, hi, Anna. Welcome. And uh, it's Dalton Hart. All right, great. Good, we're getting a number of people here. Bryce Newcomer, Aaron, thank you for being here. Aaron and uh, Virginia Beach, great. Okay, let's see else. who else here. Bryce, excellent. And uh, Olivia is right here in good old Cincinnati. Hey, Olivia, did the did the Bengals play today? I, I don't know if they had. We were in Chicago all this weekend, but uh, I can't see if the Bengals are on tonight. Did, did they have a bye today, or what's going on with the Bengals? All right, uh, let's see who else. We have Michael. All right, Michael Butler, and uh, welcome, Michael. Nice to see you. If you're on the chat, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, okay, getting more folks here. Looks like we have um, Allison, very good. We have um, NB, I'm not sure who that is, but from California, hi NB. And anyone else? We'll get started here in a minute. Uh, this is just to get a chance to get on here and uh, have you all be able to, okay, Nicole Britton. Have, this is a, a chance to get on the stream and um, really give you a chance to ask questions to me about the course material or any of the, the assignments or information about the method or the tools, or the, especially the group uh, project that you're doing. And um, let's see here. All right, Corrine. So your YouTube account is defaulting to your work account. That's no problem. <laughs> Care Center. No, uh, no problem at all. All right, and this is being recorded, so you will would have a chance to go ahead and um, review this again, or if some of you are missing this tonight due to uh, family events or whatever. So, uh, Michael Carr is not going to be able to be with us tonight. Uh, he is uh, getting ready for a very big uh, work event. Uh, he tells me for tomorrow, so so he is not going to make it tonight. But uh, that's okay. I've taught this course many times. And Michael, if you don't know, is a former student of mine. He's taken this course and he's learned this method. And he's really a great asset to me on uh, large sections like we have with this online course, some 80 students. Uh, now, before we get started, if you would do me a favor, uh, shameless uh, request here, but if you would go ahead and hit the subscribe, you don't have to stay subscribed, but if you would just hit the subscribe button to YouTube, um, I do post regular things about this method and about uh, creativity and innovation in general. So anything I post on, on LinkedIn, for example, gets also simultaneously broadcast on YouTube and saved over to, to YouTube. But it would help me a lot if you go ahead and just uh, uh, hit um, the subscribe button. It looks like Dalton Hart, you beat everybody to it. Good, you're the first. Um, welcome, Brian, also here from Cincinnati. Uh, good. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get um, get started. And 
the things I want to cover tonight are, I want to review the two tools that you've been exposed to already, subtraction and task unification, just a quick review of those, and to point out some pitfalls that I think are pretty common. I've also, I've already seen a couple of those in the discussion boards where they're making kind of the common mistakes that go with this, this, uh, these tools. I want to discuss a little bit about the concept of fixedness. I've been reading the discussion uh, this, uh, this week, and fixedness is a very important principle that you need to understand. So I want to cover that in a little bit of detail. Uh, but then spend time on the group project to make sure you understand the Dream Catalog project. If you have questions, just go ahead and post them in real time. Uh, and I can um, answer those questions. I also want to make sure you all know that, you know, if for some reason you wanted to meet with me separately, either as a group, small group, or individually to talk about the course or talk about your careers or you know, talk about anything, really, um, you're certainly welcome to do that. Just uh, email Darla at um, uh, Darla at DrewBoyd.com and set up time. That's probably the easiest way that we can jump on, even if it's a weekend or evening. I don't have any problem at all, especially if it's going to help you understand the course material. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first tool I want to review with you is subtraction. Let me give you some pointers on that and a little bit of it, the background on that and what you need to do to make that successful. Subtraction is the technique that is defined as the removal of a core element rather than the addition of a new system or function. And subtraction is the tool we always start first with in any kind of training. We tend to start subtraction first because in a way it's the easiest to understand what you're trying to do. In, an, in another way, it's also the most um, shocking. <laughs> it, kind of, it, it kind of attacks right away what this method is all about. Because essentially all SIT is, is this. What SIT is trying to do is get, to get you to realize that um, to, to have you take something in a systematic way, reconfigure it, you know, alter it with, with this uh, tool, and then take that altered state, that morphed thing, that's, even if it seems ridiculous, and seek a benefit. You know, is there a benefit to this? And it's this idea that, you know, innovation, most people think you start with a, a problem and then you go to a solution to that problem. Well, with SIT, it's backwards, right? We're, we're reversing that. In a sense, you're starting with a solution, a hypothetical solution that you don't know what it does. And then you work towards a benefit that it solves. And who knew that humans are actually better at that direction? And that's really the beauty, one of the beautiful things about SIT, that, that and the fact that it works better than anything else I've ever found out there. Folks, listen to me. If you le learn this method and you master one or two of these tools, you are set. You will be able to be a creative person on demand uh, anytime you want, in any situation you want. It's really um, an important opportunity here for you in your career. Now, with subtraction, and this is important with any of the tools, uh, I saw this, I can't remember who, let's see who it was um, uh, in the discussion board. That the, okay, Brandon, I don't know if Brandon Grote is on the, Grote is on the call, but um, one of the things that you have to remember to, to do when you use these techniques is this. With subtraction, for example, the first step is to make a numbered list, a list of the components. And don't do what, Brandon, what you did in your in your discussion board is you, you kind of made a bullet point list. And I, I know it's a picky thing, but always start with a good numbered list. And I'll tell you why, just from experience, it makes it easier to facilitate, makes it easier to kind of keep things in order, make a, make a numbered list. And the, the real reason I like to make a numbered list is this. Once you've made a numbered list of the components of the product you're working on or a service, I like to close my eyes and randomly pick a component to use in the subtraction exercise. And here's why. And, and one of you did that in last week's discussion, and I called it out. 
so that everybody's aware. Again, not, not to criticize that student, but to make, make the point. The real thing you have to be careful of with subtraction is this. The real thing you have to be careful is that you don't make a list of the components and then look at which one you can take out that could lead to an idea. Because if you do, you will succumb to fixedness. So the point is not to pick something you think should, should come out or could come out, or maybe you want to get rid of or something to take out to lean it out a little bit. No. You want to take out something that is surprising, that shocks you, that, that seems absurd. And I, I just I like to close my eyes and do it randomly. Otherwise, I'm going to get a bad result. I'm not going to get as good of a result as I could. So I know that sounds counterintuitive, but believe me, you will find yourself getting much better results with this method if you follow this one little technique. One little technique. Make a numbered list. Same thing with task unification, multiplication, all the techniques. Make a numbered list. And then when you make your manipulation and do this on the final exam, and I want to see you on the final exam. I think we have a final exam in this course. You're all thinking, oh my God, there's a final exam. And I may have misspoken because um, in the live version of the course, I have a final exam. We may not have one here. But when you apply this in your dream catalog projects, at least, you're fine. You're going to get better results if you just listen to this little technique. Take out a component randomly, not something that you have looked at and tried to judge and decide which components should come out. That's, that's the biggest mistake you can make on subtraction. Don't just take out something because you think it can um, uh, stand to come out. All right, let me move to task unification, which is the tool you're covering this week. And task unification, like before, make, make sure you make a numbered list. But here's the other thing that you want to remember with task unification. The biggest mistake you can make is to... Uh, two, two mistakes you can make with task unification. One is you, you force a component to lose its old job and just take on a new job. So, for example, if any of you play the game of golf, um, golfers use a, a cover that goes over their, their drivers, their clubs, certain clubs, to protect them. And what happens when you're out on the course, you, you lose one of those darn things, and it's annoying. You got to go back and you know either buy a new one. But what most people do is just they take an old sock, you know, an old sock from their drawer, and just put the sock over and cover the club, and it works just fine. <laughs> I know I've done it. Well, that is a resourceful thing to do, but not necessarily creative. It's not task unification. It's just repurposing something. Task unification works best when you take a component, it has its old job, and now it has this additional job that it wasn't originally designed to do. Great example is in the, in, the windshield, in the rear window of your car, you typically have some wires running through it. If you live in cold climate, climates, you know that those wires are the defrosters of your car uh, window. But for many cars, they also serve as the antenna for the radio. I love that. It's a great example of task unification. So make sure you always retain the old job, and then it takes on an additional job. That's, that's number one. Number two is a mistake where um, task unification, sometimes you'll, you'll take two different things, you'll put them together and form like a, a bundle, but that's not really task unification. I want you to think about the Swiss Army knife. Swiss Army knife. Um, is it? Do you think it's creative? Would you say that's a creative element? Not really. It's not very creative. I'm not a hater. I've got one, <laughs> but it's a it's it's a productive tool. It's a it's a, it's a platform with multiple functions on it: screwdriver, can opener, wine bottle opener, knife, and things like that. Nail clipper, but just combining things on a platform is not task unification. That is called bundling. 
And bundling is a great marketing technique. You know, we, we bundle things all the time to make it more convenient for customers. The iPhone, the smartphones, are, there's a lot of bundling there. I mean, basically, that's what the phone is. It's a bundle of phone, text, and, and um, email. That was the original start. And it's, of course, taken on many other things, camera and many other functions. So that's the mistake you can make with task unification. Just be careful to avoid that. Be, be, be true to the process. Let the tool do the work it was designed to do, and you'll get a great result from it. All right, let me pause here and just look in the uh, chat. If you have particular questions you want me to address, is there something in particular that's confusing for you or unclear about what I just spoke about? If it is, you know, go ahead and type it into the chat function and I will um, try, to, try to answer it for you, be sure to answer it for you. Anything? Did the Cincinnati folks tell me, Lindsay, did, is, uh, are the Bengals playing tonight? <laughs> do, they, do they have a game today or do they have a bye? Anybody know? All right. <laughs> Not important. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead and um, move on to the, the next thing, which is to talk about a little bit more. Oh, they play the Browns tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jordan. Yeah, okay, Monday Night Football. Got it. Thank you. Let me go ahead and talk to you a little bit about um, the principle of fixedness. Because I see in the in the discussion boards some a lot of comments about fixedness, and I think you're generally getting the idea, but let me let me explain fixedness this way so you really understand it. Fixedness is a cognitive bias that makes it very hard for us to see other opportunities or potential than, than what we're used to. The, the re reality is we all have fixedness. The other reality is fixedness is not a bad thing. Fixedness is actually a good thing. It's how we kind of organize our world. It's how we keep keep organized, how we get dressed in the morning and how do we drive to work or uh, how we do stuff. And it makes us efficient. It, it um, uh, reduces the sort of the cognitive load. You know, you don't have to think about how you're going to brush your teeth tonight. You do it the same way. That's great. But when you want to be creative, fixedness is what gets in your way. Uh, so we all have fixedness. You can't get rid of it. You wouldn't want to get rid of it even if you could. But when you want to be creative, you need a, a tool, a cognitive tool to help you confront, find, and break your fixedness. So, so don't look at fixedness as a bad thing, as an evil thing. It isn't. Uh, don't, don't think for a minute that you don't have it um, or that you can just um, ignore it. You can't ignore it because you don't even realize you have it. We all have it. And it is strong, believe me. It is especially strong about things that are very familiar to you, like things at work or things at home, everyday products and services. So fixedness comes in three different types. The first one you've been exposed to this week is functional fixedness. Functional fixedness is the cognitive bias that makes it hard for us to imagine a component doing a job other than what it was designed to do. It's very hard for us to see some component now doing some new task, additional task. Uh, you'll be exposed to the other two later in the course, structural and relational fixedness. Uh, so those are important principles. It, fixedness is, in my experience, the most important barrier to generating a creative idea, fixedness. Now, uh, any questions about fixedness or what it is? I'm just, again, looking through some of the, the comments online here and generally a pretty good understanding of fixedness. Uh, and this is where SIT, the method, and the five techniques do such a great job. They help you 
find fixedness when you otherwise wouldn't have been able to. I don't know of another tool that does it as well, which is why I'm so, you know, so high on this method and, and teach it to companies all over the world now. I mean, it's such a important tool. I'm, I'm firmly convinced this will become the dominant method of generating ideas in the future. No doubt about it. So if there are no questions, then let me go ahead and cover the last point tonight. We we'll, should wrap up here in you know, 30 minutes. We should be done here in, in uh, five or 10 minutes. The last thing I want to mention to you is this. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the the group project, the um, Dream Catalog project. Now, the Dream Catalog project is discussed in the syllabus. It's also discussed in on Canvas. It's a group project. Everybody has three members in their team, I think, except one. One team has four. But what the what the dream catalog is it's it's a way for you think of it as a way for you to show how to express your ideas in visual and verbal format uh written format and the idea essentially comes from an old work experience i had we needed a way to to convey our ideas to our our senior leaders and i came up with this crazy idea why don't we make it look like a like a sharper image catalog <laughs> And we did, and it worked very well. And that technique now is used by a lot of companies still from my former company at Johnson & Johnson. And we teach this now to many companies around the world as well. How to express your ideas in the form of a catalog. And it's a catalog because what does a catalog have? It has a, it has a picture of the product or service. It has a, a, a description of the benefits, a name of the product, you know, the whole, whole bit. It, and you should approach it just like that. We have some good examples on Canvas. Um, what, what I'd like you to do is this. To get this project going is, first of all, get with your teammates. Make sure you all understand where you all live. And, and um, I know it's online, but you, you know, the online world today, you, a lot of your work is going to be done online. And this is, this is very much that same idea. But then you and your colleagues should pick a category of product or service that you'd like to work on for this project and then email me for approval. Now, it can be one of the products that you started working on at the beginning of the course. Doesn't have to be. It should be a product or service that's different than anything used in the course material and different from any of the examples that, that are online now. So, uh, so that's, that's what you want to do. First thing first, pick a category of a product and you want to check it with me. I, I won't say so much for approval as much as my advice. I, I just know from experience what product products you can pick that are going to make for great projects. And I know which ones you don't want to pick. For example, do not pick a microwave oven. And I'll say I'll tell you why you don't want to pick a microwave. None of you know how a microwave oven works, and you need that to, in this particular case to use SAT. Uh, students have tried it. it. It's just it's believe me, there are much more fertile areas. I mean, just pick up um, your your bedroom, the bed that you sleep on. So, you know, a simple product will work just fine for this. Corkscrew, anything. Um, but pick something that maybe one of you is involved in at work. You should pick something that all three of you have some general understanding of. You either have used the product or you've seen it online or you, you know, you know enough about it. It's not something completely foreign to you. Um, I had a group of students that wanted to do um, robotics in a factory. And one of the, one of the students worked at Toyota where they had robotics, you know, robotics that would put the cars together and paint them. Well, the other two students didn't know a thing about it, nothing. And they struggled. So what's true about SIT is it helps if you have at least some, not a lot, but at least some domain knowledge, you know, general idea of what this is about. You don't have to be an expert on it. 
So that's my recommendation for the Dream Catalog Project. Pick something that, that you feel pretty confident that you can, um, you, you, you know, want to work on, that you think is interesting, that is not like anything else we've seen in the course. Pick something new. And that all three of you have some general uh, knowledge of. Email me if you have any doubts. I'll tell you right away if it's not a good idea or that it's probably a good idea. And again, it can be product or service. This method works equally well on products as it does services or processes or anything else that's important to you. Maybe something in your business now or in your job. And then you're going to, of course, produce a catalog like you see on the uh, Canvas uh, platform. Okay, well, that was really all I wanted to cover is just to give you an idea of what um, some of the pitfalls of those first two tools that we've uh, covered, subtraction and task unification. Basically, the rest of the course now is covering each of the other techniques. Uh, the one that's going to challenge you the most is left for last. It's called attribute dependency. It's the technique that tends to be the hardest to learn and the hardest to teach, um, but arguably probably the most powerful of the of the five. Uh, but you'll be expected in all your coursework to to demonstrate um, proficiency. I, I will say proficiency with all five of the techniques. Okay, are there any um, any questions? Anything that you want me to spend more time talking about or spend more time explaining or just any feedback in general about the course. Okay, so the question is, and I, I probably threw you off here from Allison. She said, um, is there a final project? It's in the syllabus, but there's nothing listed in the assignment of grades. It, it's not, you mean know, like a final exam? No. It's, it's um, at least I'm pretty sure, let's see. Uh, it should be, I'm looking at the syllabus here. Oh no, there's, okay, wait. Group project, LinkedIn learning courses, discussion boards. Okay, final exam, yeah. Uh, Well, wait a minute. So we have we have quizzes in this. Let me go to the the uh, Canvas platform here because the quizzes in this online course take the place of a final exam, which um, you know works just fine for this particular course. But let me see how um, let me see how we've approached it. So I'm on week three task unification. Yeah, so you just have have quizzes and um, quizzes and discussion boards in the Dream Catalog project. There is and should not be a final exam. Okay, there's no final exam. Now, if I, <laughs> I'll get with Darla. You would think I would know, but I, I, I had not planned on a final exam because you are already getting um, proficiency demonstrated with the quizzes. All right, so uh, let's see. Question here from Ann, Anna Pittman. How many products, services total should be in the catalog? Good question. Do we need to specify which technique we used? Uh, a good planning number is, you know, let's say one per, t per technique, you know, five to six you know, four to seven, something like that. Yes, you should tell us which technique you used. No, you don't need to have an example of each one in the dream catalog. You don't. If all your product ideas in the dream catalog came from one tool, like division, that's fine. I'd rather have five to six of your very best ideas, no matter what tool they came from. Uh, okay, good. And can you explain, boy, Anna, you're, you have a lot of questions. I'm just kidding. And can you explain the grading 
point on the pipeline diversity of the ideas. Um, let me go to the, let me look exactly what you're looking at. I'm presuming this is in the uh, syllabus. Let me look, make sure I pull the syllabus down from online. What, um, <laughs> okay, it's no problem, Anna. Uh, you know, what, what the grading, here's, here's really what the grading is about. The grading really is meant to um, challenge you to create something new, something useful, something feasible, that you use the tool correctly, and that ideally it shows and demonstrates what I call the closed world mindness, or a mindset. In other words, you tended to use a component right within the closed world. It has that kind of that, you know, gee, why didn't I think of that? For example, let's say you have a great idea for a new flashlight, but you have to import some new holographic technology to make this work. Um, and, you know, probably a good idea, but not. it's a better idea when you harness resources right within the immediate environment. They tend to yield ideas that are stronger, a little bit more creative. Now, you mentioned this idea. Uh, can you explain this grading point? I'm looking for that grading point. Let's see if I see it here. Okay. Um, I see. 20 from the pipeline diversity, incremental breakthrough transformation. So usefulness, novelty, and um, that that twenty five percent. Think of it this way. This is in the um, this is in the dream catalog, by the way. the The idea is, um, do you have a do you have a a diversified portfolio? Do you have five ideas that are just basically ho hum? Um, do you have or do you have a mix of ideas? Some are some are really exotic, you know, like really out there. Some are incremental. Some are more what I'll call breakthrough, that sort of middle ground, what we call the sweet spot. That's all. I like I like to see a catalog that has, and to be honest with you, I don't really pay that much attention to it. It, you know, unless it's just four, five, five, five or six really meager, mediocre, incremental boring ideas, you know, just to be honest with you, I mean, I'm looking for, if you use the method right, you should produce ideas that are pretty cool, right? I mean, that, I, I see the method work over and over again. I have complete faith that this method, if used properly, will lead you to some interesting ideas. So, so pick, you know, pick some, your best ideas, a, 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 a mix of some ex exotic is fine. Um, incremental is fine. But have a mix of them, you know, just almost like you were really pitching this to your senior leadership. And senior leaders like ideas that, like a portfolio. You know, they want a pipeline of some home runs, but risky, as well as some incremental ones. Okay, that's really, thank you, Anna. That's kind of what I'm, what I'm looking at there. Now, I'm... I'm uh, confusing the hell out of myself here because I do see I put on a final exam, but I, I'm pretty sure that's a mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and even if I had planned it, I think th I think there's plenty of work in this course, plenty between the quizzes, the LinkedIn learning courses, the peer reviews, and the um, group projects. So final exam, I think, would be uh, a little bit of overkill in this particular course. So well, I'll, I apologize for that confusion. I'll get the word out to, to everybody so you're not having to one more thing to, to drive you nuts on this thing. What other questions? Let's see if I got everything. Uh, final exam from Allison. Okay. Anna, Allison, NB. Okay, let's see. Here's a question from NB. And NB, if I recall, is, let me get that, is Nicole. Britain from California. Nicole, where where in California are you based? Let's see while she's answering that. Can we submit our dream project to you part way through to check in and make sure we're on our track? Yeah, you can. Um, I'm okay with that. You know, typically I don't like when you do that, but in this particular case, um, you know, I mean, sure, if it's gonna 
I like to see it. And if you're way off, you know, I'd rather catch you now. Uh, so don't hesitate. Probably better just jump on a Zoom call with me and walk me through it, you and the team. Lo I'd love to connect with you. And so, Nicole, you're on Cupertino. Okay, great. Great. Um, good, good, good questions. Anything else from the group here? You guys are the, you guys are, seven, there's 17 students out of 81. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it is, it is an asynchronous course, and I do respect people's times. That's why these are completely optional. But uh, you guys are the uh, diehards, I guess. And those that watch it afterwards that couldn't make it for various reasons, like family obligations, you're the diehards too. Thank you for, for making the effort to watch this after the fact. Okay, if there are no further questions, we're going to go ahead and adjourn for, for the night. Um, I think my cell phone is, um, okay, Aaron, wait, Aaron's got a question here. Aaron, is the Dream Catalog supposed to connect our innovations to a company? You know, um, it can. It can be a hypothetical one, Aaron. It can be a real one. I've had students do projects for, like, un, as though they were Procter & Gamble. And they would work on something like VIX. Oh, my God, the ideas were amazing. One group did CoverGirl, um, which I shared with Procter & Gamble, just blew them away. So it's totally up to you. If you want to associate it with a real company or a fake company, great. Kind of, you know, have fun with it. Make it a catalog like it were a real company, a startup or a new company or an existing company. Totally your call. Um, okay, so... I do see in the in the syllabus two things you want to know. My cell phone number is in the syllabus. You're welcome to call anytime. Um, if I don't answer, there's only four reasons why. Um, I'm traveling, I'm asleep, I'm teaching, or I'm dead. And in either event, whatever event, just go ahead and leave a message and somebody will get back to you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Guys, relax. Relax, Bryce. Okay, yeah, very helpful. And the other thing you want to know in there too is uh, my assistant, Darla. She is uh, great, Darla at drewboyd.com. Just email her and say, I'd like to Zoom with Drew. And she should uh, set it right up. Tell her what course you're in. And um, we'll jump on Zoom and chat. Or if you're here in Cincinnati and you want to meet, I can certainly do that as well. I want to be here and Michael the same way. We're here for your success. We want you to be able to understand this method. It can be a very important component of your professional skill sets. You know, take take advantage of it. Take advantage of of the time with me. Not that not to say that when this course ends, you you know you can be done with me. You're not allowed to contact me anymore. That's certainly not true. I'm talking to former students all the time, including online students. You're you're fully you know you're a student of mine, and and in every respect. So I hope we have the opportunity to continue. Uh, interacting with each other. Okay, pretty good. You want to hear a dad joke before we go? No, no dad jokes. <laughs> I, okay, I, I, I won't look. I'll let you off the hook this time, but um, next time there's going to be some serious uh, dad jokes for everybody. You're going to have to put up with me one way or the other. I'm just kidding. Of course. All right, everybody, listen, have a great evening. Thank you so much for joining in and uh, be in touch if you, if you need me. Take care. Bye-bye.